to retrieve small items that may fall between them during the sermon. However, if items are lost, please contact the Lost's mom following the sermon. As a reminder, concessions on the drill bit will be closing at 8.30. Military music at Navy Band Great Lakes has a long, rich history. The first musician, a bugler, arrived in 1908 to the then new Naval Training Center, and the band was officially established in 1911 when the first recruits arrived for training. During World War I, the illustrious John Philip Sousa led the band as he trained more than 1,500 musicians for the Navy. Today's members carry on that noble tradition in the spirit of their model, pride in service. With a wide range of performing ensembles with this talented group of professional military musicians appear in hundreds of parade, concert, school, public, and recruiting performances throughout its 11 state area each year as the Navy's ambassadors to the Midwest. The commanding all Naval Service Training Command, Captain Craig Manley, is proud to present the men and women of Navy Band, Great Lakes.
To honor those who have served, Navy Band Great Lakes will conclude today's concert with a performance of the Armed Forces Medley. As your service song is played, please stand to recognize your service or your family's service to our country. Today's concert is musician third class Joe Mignor, and conducting Navy Band Great Lakes is musician first class James Randolph. Another acknowledgement, please, for their outstanding performance this morning.
The parade of graduates is underway and will arrive at Midway Ceremonial Hall in just a few moments. Please make sure that all personal items are clear of the aisle and the drill deck. Guests in the balcony are reminded that standing along the rail is prohibited for the remainder of the ceremony. We know that your sailors will have many wonderful and amazing stories for you about their boot camp experience. However, at this time, we offer some video evidence that reveals our side of the story. Hurry up, let's go. Get on the bus, let's go. Recruit Training Command is the quarter deck of the United States Navy. Good order and discipline will be maintained 24-7. Proper military posture will be maintained 24-7. Every enlisted sailor begins their naval career here, and our mission is fairly simple. It's to transform civilians into smartly disciplined, physically fit sailors ready for follow-on training and service to the fleet, and while doing so, to instill in them the highest values of honor, courage, and commitment. You are no longer a civilian. Whatever you were before is now over. You are about to begin a journey that's gonna make you a part of the greatest naval force the world has ever known. This training will not be easy. It wasn't meant to be. Our training environment is controlled chaos. And while it may not seem like that to the recruits, each and every event has meaning and purpose. You're gonna sound off at the top of your lungs. Do you understand? Yes, sir, yes, sir. We are designed to develop skill sets that sailors can carry throughout their entire career. We push hard on physical fitness. Watch standing. Looking, man. Look! Try it. Read it and look. And creating a warrior mindset. Now with the mental scan. You're going to be focused on your mind. A true body, mind, and soul approach. When I say gas, 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 you'll have 15, one, five seconds to down your face, tighten your straps, check floor seal, and put your hands in your pockets. All of our recruits receive training that will help them the second they get to the fleet. firefighting, damage control, weapons and seamanship. Our recruits get hands-on training and application with them all. together as a team, execute the mission, and the next time I see you, you'll be sailors. Booyah, neighbor. Booyah! Everything they learn is tested in a battle stations. Identify yourself. Chief, Division 001, man in ready for battle station. Chief. Very well. Do not relax anything that is on you. That is a 24-hour event where the recruit ceases to exist and a sailor is forged. Navy boot camp really is a machine. 
with a swarm of moving parts, all working towards the same goal, making a sailor. The Navy has resources for your family to get the most up-to-date information and even contact you while out to sea. The Navy Ombudsman is one of those resources. Ombudsmen are volunteers appointed by the commanding officer to serve as an information link between command leadership and Navy families. They're trained to disseminate information, Department of Navy information, command climate issues, and good deals around the community such as events, tickets, entertainment, etc. They also provide resources and referral and are instrumental in providing assistance before requiring immediate command attention. To find your command ombudsman, go to ombudsmanregistry.org. Welcome to Fleet and Family Support Programs. We take care of sailors and their family members to reduce the impact of stressors in their lives. Our programs and services focus on prevention, support, and resiliency. Counseling, advocacy, and prevention programs provide individual, group, and family counseling, victim intervention, and related prevention education and awareness programs, such as clinical counseling. Non-medical short-term counseling is available at no cost to active duty sailors and their family members. This encompasses a broad scope of educational, preventative, and therapeutic services that promote improved quality of life and increased resilience. New Parent Support. The New Parent Support Program provides military families who are expecting or have young children with comprehensive parenting and early child development education. Sexual Assault Prevention and Response, or SAPR, supports commanding officers in creating a command climate of prevention that promotes installation-wide sexual assault awareness efforts and the management of sexual assault cases, including victim advocacy and identification and enrollment, assignment coordination, and family support. Fleet and family support programs also provide a deployable workforce that supports sailors who are underway with embedded deployed resiliency counselors and prevention coordinators. Additionally, we provide onboard deployment trainings via our departure and separation and return and reunion programs, which are conducted at the beginning and end of deployments. These programs and many more are provided in person, online, by telephone, and on the My Navy Family mobile app, which provides a one-stop shop for obtaining information on services and resources. Remember, as you journey through your Navy career, Fleet and Family Support Programs is with you every step of the way. A strong America is a force for good in the world, and the strength of our military is paramount to that mission. Wherever they go, 
The USO is there to keep our service members connected to everything that gives meaning to their service, family, home, and country. The USO is trusted to support our service members on all seven continents. With more than 200 locations, Home for Our Troops is as close as the nearest USO center or program. The USO provides critical programming, connecting with service members and their families millions of times each year. From the moment they swear an oath, new recruits are welcomed by the USO's family of staff and volunteers. I'm here to witness my son swearing in. It's nice to have basically a liaison to help people so they aren't as nervous of what their children are going to go through. Separation and constant movement are an ever-present challenge for service members and their loved ones. The USO keeps military families strong, providing connection home and events for families and couples. From the little Christmas events for the kids, or like we had a date night, the USO has given us time, not only together, time with our children, and things to do. When troops are deployed, the USO provides a home away from home to help bridge the distance. On the front lines, a care package, a phone call home, comfort food, a familiar song, or a moment to relax can mean everything. When their military service to the nation is complete, the USO connects transitioning veterans with resources in their new communities and helps them plan for their next chapter. We spend most of our time serving in the country that when it's time to get out, we're usually behind the curve a little. The USO has come in to kind of get us a leg up on that transition so we can make the best move into a second career. We are the USO, the force behind the forces. Go to USO.org to learn more. Good morning and welcome to Recruit Training Command. I am Captain Craig Mattingly, Commander of Naval Service Training Command. I want to personally welcome you to our Navy family. What an exciting day. Family and friends and shipmates, it is an honor to have you with us as we celebrate the graduation of our newest United States Navy sailors. It seems just like yesterday, I was graduating boot camp and it meant the world to me to have my family and friends sitting in the audience just like you. I want to take a moment to thank you for playing a significant role in the lives of these sailors. Your support, your encouragement, and your love help them reach this time-honored tradition. As we look upon these young women and men, we see a transformation that took place over the past several weeks. They endured rigorous physical and mental training, pushing themselves to their limits and beyond. They learned the importance of teamwork, of discipline, and dedication. They have become part of a proud tradition of service to our nation. Each of these new sailors will play a critical role in fulfilling our Navy's mission. They will be stationed around the world, serving on ships, on submarines and aircraft, protecting our nation and our allies. Your sailor will make a positive impact on the world. They will be ambassadors of our country, representing the best of what America has to offer. They will be leaders, mentors and role models for others to follow. As we celebrate this graduation, let us remember the sacrifices that were made to get here. Let us honor the commitment and dedication of these new sailors, and let us look forward to the bright future that lies ahead, knowing that our nation is in good hands. Thank you for playing such a significant role in the lives of these recruits, and I warmly welcome you to our Navy family. Enjoy the ceremony and celebrate your sailor. Thank you.
As the parade of graduates approaches, we salute the states and territories whose sons and daughters will graduate today. Delaware, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Georgia, Connecticut, Massachusetts, Maryland, South Carolina, New Hampshire, Virginia, New York, North Carolina, Rhode Island, Vermont, Kentucky, Tennessee, Ohio, Louisiana, Indiana, Mississippi, Illinois, Alabama, And now, we invite you to join the staff of Recruit Training Command in welcoming the graduating divisions with your applause as they enter Midway Ceremonial Drill Hall and are announced in the following order.
Today's graduating performing unit is Division 950. Division 950 provides the recruit choir, drill team, and band for today's ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, you may be seated. Thank you. Divisions, right, face, section leaders fall out and collect out of arms. Divisions, counter, marsh. Divisions, halt. May I have your attention, please? For the remainder of this review, no one will be permitted to pass in front of the review stand, and we ask this as a courtesy to our reviewing officer. Photography is certainly encouraged, but we ask that you remain seated and off the drill deck. 
The photographers you will see on deck throughout the review are the official photographers of Recruit Training Command. Division commanders, left or right, face parade rest. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I'm Lieutenant Daniel Alcorn, Group Training Command's Drill Division Officer. I'd like to welcome you to today's pass and review. Today, we'll see eight divisions comprised of 659 sailors participating in their graduation ceremony and soon to join the most powerful Navy in the world. Please draw your attention to the unit positioned at center deck. There is the review commander and staff. The review commander is responsible for conducting the graduation ceremony. Today's review commander is Seaman Recruit Devin Connor from Jacksonville, Florida. Let's give him a hand, folks. <laughs> Performing today is the state flags unit on their seventh week of training, the staff unit on the ninth week of training, and the triple threat unit on their tenth and final week of training. These units are comprised entirely of recruits. During their night of arrival, recruits are placed into divisions of 88 personnel and assigned division commanders. Recruit division commanders form the backbone of recruit training and are key individuals in the life of every recruit. Division commanders must serve as counselors, disciplinarians, administrators, and military leaders. Above all, they must show themselves as outstanding examples of military bearing, appearance, attitude, and behavior. Each division also has a recruit chief petty officer this senior recruit supervises the divisional staff positions and leads the division in the absence of their division commanders. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce the graduating divisions, their division commanders, and recruit chief petty officers. As I introduce each division, they will raise the competitive flags that they have earned throughout their training. As I introduce each recruit chief petty officer, the flag representing their home state will also be raised. Please hold your applause until all introductions have been completed. I will be starting from there, right. Division three, six, three. Commanded by Chief Petty Officer Matthew Arnold. Chief Petty Officer Chris Nickel. Petty Officer First Class Frankie Danridge. And the Recruit Chief Petty Officer Senior Recruit Xavier Feliz Torres from Homestead, Florida. Division three, six, Five. Commanded by Petty Officer First Class, Lucas Kiley. Petty Officer First Class, Kevin Johnson. Petty Officer First Class, Vincent Hanby. And their crew chief Petty Officer, Fireman Jacob Rendich from San Diego, California. Division three, six, six. Commanded by Chief Petty Officer Jacob Arnold. Petty Officer First Class Darius Jarman. Petty Officer First Class Keith Richman. And the recruit Chief Petty Officer Seaman Joshua Zimmerman from Plano, Texas. Division 367. Commanded by Chief Petty Officer Paul Olich. Chief Petty Officer Kevin Richards. Petty Officer First Class Brett Santiago. And their group Chief Petty Officer Airman Victoria Enrique from Spring Hill, Florida. Division 368. Commanded by Chief Petty Officer Michael Duenas. Petty Officer First Class Corey Alexander. Petty Officer Second Class Melissa Lopez. 
and their crew chief petty officer of seaman Elise Rising from Dallas, Texas. Division three, six, nine. Commanded by Senior Chief Petty Officer David Williams. Petty Officer Second Class Tim Adams. Petty Officer Second Class Roxanne Lewis. And their Crew Chief Petty Officer Seaman Apprentice Isaiah Wapipa from Carson City, Nevada. Division 370. Commanded by Petty Officer First Class, Martin Mezzamillan. Petty Officer First Class, Cherry De Leon. Petty Officer Second Class, Nayeli Corsino Agramante. And their Crew Chief Petty Officer, Airman Avery Saul from Caldwell, Idaho. Division 950. Commanded by Senior Chief Petty Officer Jessica Guzman. Chief Petty Officer Maurice Marsh. Petty Officer First Class Moises Beltran. And their Recruit Chief Petty Officer Seaman Recruit Jaden Foster from West Hartford, Connecticut. On behalf of the Commanding Officer and Staff of Recruit Training Command, we congratulate these division commanders and recruit chief petty officers on a job. Well done. In a moment, you will see the ceremonial side boys, boatswain, and honor guard take their places for rival honors. This time honor tradition is our formal greeting for this morning's viewing officer. When requested by the announcer, Please stand for rival honors, marching on of the colors, the national anthem, and the invocation. As a reminder, military guests shall remain covered throughout the entire graduation ceremony. And ladies and gentlemen, one final note. As befitting the importance of this occasion, our ceremony is conducted in a formal manner. However, we do encourage you to participate in today's graduation ceremony by letting your applause show these sailors just how proud of them you are. Once again, welcome aboard.
Will the guests please rise and remain standing for the arrival of the official party? Recruit Training Command, arriving. United States Navy, all right. Order. The guests may be seated. Will the guests please rise? Present arms.
Inside the color. Present. Arms. Order, arms. Chaplain Bush will offer this morning's invocation. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, as we gather today to celebrate the graduation of these sailors from Navy boot camp, we extend our heartfelt gratitude. In the face of challenges, they have shown resilience, dedication, and a commitment to the values of honor, courage, and commitment that define the United States Navy. Grant them strength and wisdom as they embark on their naval careers. May the discipline instilled in them and the bonds forged during this transformative journey serve as a guiding light. As they sail into the vast oceans, May they find their compass and in integrity, their anchor in resilience, and the horizon in hope. We also thank you and ask for a blessing on the RDCs and instructors who have shaped them, the families who have supported them, and the comrades who have, who have stood by their side. And as they pledge their loyalty to our great nation, may we in turn pledge our unwavering support to them. And God, let these feelers as sailors feel your presence in every mission, every drill, and every moment of quiet reflection, and lighten their path as they guard the freedoms we hold so dear, and let them know that you are always with them and that they are never alone on their journey. I pray to the honor of your name. Amen. Our guests may be seated. At this point, the commanding officer will issue orders and instructions to the unit commanders. Then, the unit commanders will face about and relay the information to their divisions. Today's events show how orders are passed through the chain of command. Very well. 
The Sailor's Creed. I. In the United States, I was born and bred in the Constitution of the United States of America. And I will obey the orders of the Lord and of me. I represent my dear lady and those of the world who spend the freedom of the Constitution of the world. I promise to serve the most dignity in all my faith, honor, courage, and humility. I am in his excellence and protection of all. Good morning, Captain. I present the graduating divisions. Request permission to commence the review. Good morning. Commence the review. Aye, aye, sir.
The ward winner is reporting, sir. Very well. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Captain Ken Frober, Commanding Officer of Recruit Training Command. I'd like to welcome all our family and friends attending this recruit graduation and those watching live from around the world. Joining us today is our reviewing officer, Captain James Proud of the United States Navy. I would also like to acknowledge staff from our fleet sponsors, 3rd Marine Expeditionary Force, sponsoring Division 367, and Maritime Expeditionary Security Group 2, sponsoring Division 368. Our fleet sponsor program allows recruits to connect with sailors and Navy commands from around the world for valuable mentoring and motivation while here at Recruit Training Command. I would also like to welcome all our veterans here today. Thank you for your dedicated service to our country. Will all our veterans please rise for a quick round of applause. Thank you for your service to our country. Division 950 graduates today, they are our triple threat unit. You just watched providing a recruit choir, drill team, and band, and they finished with a good, strong performance. A quick round of applause for 950. <laughs> and I would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge the other seven outstanding divisions standing before you here today. A round of applause for their outstanding performances as well. The staff of Recruit Training Command is committed to providing the United States Navy with basically trained, physically fit, and smartly disciplined sailors, such as those standing before you today. These sailors before you have successfully completed 10 rigorous weeks of demanding recruit training and have earned the right to wear the uniform recognized around the world as a symbol of freedom. I would also like to take a moment to introduce you, their, Navy, their family and friends, to your new Navy family. As you reconnect with your sailors shortly and navigate your new journey together, we encourage you and invite you to learn more about your family resources here in Great Lakes and around the world. Search Navy Boot Camp Navy Family or use a QR code provided on a signage around the hall to learn more about your new Navy family. Today's graduates serve as the bedrock of our naval forces and will join other American sailors around the world to defend freedom and liberty against those who threaten it. I can say with pride, this training group is ready to graduate. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you 659 of the newest and sharpest sailors in the United States Navy. system among individual recruits and divisions promotes teamwork, attention to detail, and pride in accomplishment. Divisions performing above standards throughout tra their training are awarded recognition flags in the five mission areas, academic achievement, military drill, compartment readiness, applications, and physical fitness. These flags are carried as a visible symbol of the division's success. Each flag indicates that your sailors individually and as teams met performance standards in one or more mission area events. A division that exceeds basic requirements in these areas during their training qualifies as a battle efficiency division and is awarded the Battle E flag in recognition of their performance. Three divisions have earned this honor today and we congratulate them on a job well done. Any division that excels in every phase of training and earns all flags qualifies for the Chief of Naval Operations Honor Division recognition and is awarded the CNO Honor Flag for exemplary achievement. This designation reflects a high degree of teamwork, morale, and esprit de corps, as well as the superb leadership of the division commanders. Division 366 six has earned this honor today, and we congratulate them on a job exceptionally well Done. Captain 
Captain Proddy will now present this week's individual awards, and he will be joined on the drill deck by our commanding officer, Captain Froberg. For achieving the highest overall academic score during recruit training, Seaman Clarence Navarez, Division 368 from Las Vegas, Nevada, has earned the Academic Excellence Award, which is sponsored by the Lake Defiance Chapter of the Illinois Society of the Sons of American Revolution. Seaman Navarez has received a letter of accommodation for the commanding officer. Well done, sailor. For having displayed extraordinary qualities, best expression, the American spirit of honor, initiative, and loyalty, Airman Trevor McCarthy, Division 370 from Tiffin, Ohio, is awarded the Navy League Award, which is sponsored by the Navy League of the United States. Airman McCarthy is presented with a commemorative plaque and a letter of accommodation from the commanding officer. Well done, sailor. Seaman Apprentice, the Miracle Holloway, Division 950 from Phoenix City, Alabama, is the winner of the United Service Organization Award, which best exemplifies the spirit and intent of the word shipmate. Seaman Apprentice Holloway is given a commemorative plaque from the United Service Organization. Well done, sailor. Airman Victoria Enriquez, Division 367 from Spring Hill, Florida, is the recipient of the Military Order of the World Wars Award of Merit. This award is presented for the meritorious performance during recruit training. Airman Enriquez is presented with a commemorative plaque from the Military Order of the World Wars. Well done, sailor. The Military Officers Association Leadership Award is presented to Seaman Apprentice Debbie Ann Monda, Division 367 from Port Townsend, Washington, for demonstrating exceptional tenacity and professionalism. Seaman Apprentice Monda is awarded a letter of accommodation from our commanding officer. Well done, sailor. Fireman Martin Kawating, Division 367 from Lakewood, California, is the recipient of the Navy Club of the United States of America Military Excellence Award for best exemplifying the qualities in, of enthusiasm, devotion to duty, military bearing, and teamwork. This award places him at the pinnacle of today's newest sailors. He is awarded a flag letter accommodation. Fireman Kawating, the staff of Recruit Training Command salutes you as the finest of this group of graduates. Well done, sailor.
Division! Attention! It is appropriate to recognize such outstanding individual accomplishments by these sailors with a round of three cheers. The adjutant will lead all graduating divisions in three cheers for this morning's award winners. Somebody beat me to the punch there with a round of applause. Uh, outstanding work with a very competitive uh, training group at large. And uh, for the divisions out there, can I get a hoo yeah, baby? Hoo yeah, baby! All right, I'm going to hear that again, so remember. All right, I have the distinct honor today of introducing our reviewing officer, Captain James Pride of the United States Navy. A native of Brewster, New York, he enlisted in the Navy as an electronics technician in 1992 and was commissioned in 2000. As an officer at sea, he served as division officer at USS Henry Jackson, weapons officer aboard USS Houston, and executive officer aboard pre-commissioning unit USS Illinois, pre-commissioning unit Illinois. Ashore, Captain Prouty served as commanding officer, Naval Reserve Center, Columbus, Ohio, reserve program director for Commander Submarine Force Pacific, commanding officer of the Navy's reserve, reserve's premier reserve center in Norfolk, Virginia and as a Deputy Chief of Staff for training throughout the Naval Reserve. On a side note, we may have studied together at the Naval War College way back when, talking about national security and decision making. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my distinct honor to introduce Captain Pride. Morning, everybody. Okay, to our soon-to-be sailors released to the fleet, I have permission from your captain for you to speak here in a second. Who you are, baby? Thank you very much for that. That's uh, what my Navy sister would say, recharging my Navy batteries. Thank you very much for that. Um, you know, when it's all said and done, usually there's more said than done. But right now, the speech is going to be pretty quick so we can move on with graduation. I thank you all for the opportunity to come here and speak on behalf of the Navy family. That long bio that you just heard is nothing more than 31 years of uh, someone who likes to raise their hand in volunteering. And then re recall that Navy actually stands for naturally always volunteering yourself. Am I right? Yep, okay. <laughs> uh, be courageous and raise your hand at every opportunity. I promise you it will make all the difference. To the staff here, the RDCs, let me tell you over the last two days I've seen all your hard work and looking at these fine sailors in front of us is paid dividends. Thank you for that hard work, RDCs. In case you didn't hear it recently, we really do appreciate you out in the fleet. Thank you for that. To the family and friends in the audience, thank you for rearing and supporting these fine new sailors. You helped mold these recruits into a person who has selflessly answered the call to duty and volunteered to serve a cause greater than themselves. I'm so very proud to say that. In fact, let me point out a few of the sailors that I spoke with over the last two days and why they joined the Navy. There's one sailor out there right now who wants to give, selflessly give his GI Bill benefits to his sister so that she can have a better life. Another wants to make his senior chief retired stepfather proud. One who's been here actually twice, the first time they didn't, they didn't make it, but now, but now they're about to graduate. One whose family's actually in Mexico. She restarted her life at an older age. Sailors who who had nowhere else to go, perhaps, or they wanted a fresh start or an education or they're seeking purpose in their life. Let me tell you that no matter what brought you here today, there's a lot of honor in that. You have selflessly promoted, dedicated yourself to a greater cause, and for that I commend you. First, the great news. You're now a sailor in the world's finest Navy. The not so great news, you're at the bottom rung of the leadership ladder. And that's okay. I was there too. I implore you to work hard and climb to the very top. I have a letter here written by other sailors who wish to inspire you as you graduate boot camp and move on to your next duty station. Shipmates, congratulations on your boot camp graduation and welcome to the family. 
Whether you knew it or not, today you now have an additional 400,000 siblings. We don't need to send 400,000 birthday cards each year, but what we do need you to do is stay focused, motivated, and committed to learning your rates between now and the time you report to the fleet. We're counting on you to do so. You are very important. You came to boot camp from around the world, rural, urban, suburban environments, each of you with different cultures, histories, perspectives, and ways of thinking. We need you to use those differences to help our Navy get stronger. Now that you're part of the family, if you want to jump out of a perfectly good airplane or scuba dive on a submarine, launch a plane off a carrier or shoot buoys, or even one day, many years from now, you too can read a similar letter to our newest Navy members, just like this old guy, Captain Proudy. I should have, should have read this letter before I read it. <laughs> um, you can read a letter to the newest members, just like this really handsome young man, Captain Proudy, is doing right now. There's an avenue for you to get there if you want it. It'll take some work. In fact, we need you to continually strive to, to your full potential. Take the initiative and seek out opportunities you never even knew existed. Your efforts will make our Navy stronger, you stronger, and America stronger. Over these past three decades, when I stood where you stood, stand today, ready to embark on a great adventure, I could never have imagined being on this side of the dais. What I have learned in these many years is that across American society, the confidence in our military remains high. And the reason for that is you, our nation's sailors, our number one resource. You best believe it. Those who have never served will not look at you the same. Those who have will welcome you to the fraternity of the profession of arms. And keep this in mind. You are no longer on the sidewalk. You are now and forever in the Veterans Day Parade. Congratulations. Captain Proudy will now receive the salute of the graduating divisions, and he will be joined on the drill deck by our commanding officer, Captain Froberg. Please remain seated until your graduates have been placed on liberty.
please join me in one more round of appreciation for our wonderful band, Navy Band, Great Lakes. Flags, post, section leaders fall out and retrieve out of guards. Ladies and gentlemen, today is the only day to access the Navy Exchange and Photo Pickup. Today, you can pick up your sailor at the Yorktown Parking Garage. Sailor going on Liberty without a vehicle are to exit Gate 8 toward the training station. Thanks again to each and every one of you for joining us on this most memorable of Navy days. And without further delay, now hear this. Liberty Call, Liberty Call, fall out. Midway Ceremonial Drill Hall will be closing in 20 minutes. I say again, Midway Ceremonial Drill Hall will be closing in 20 minutes. 